Hello and welcome to the Tice Trading YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna be going over state changes in your indicators and strategies and how to utilize them best when writing your own code for NinjaTrader. Whenever you create an indicator in NinjaTrader, you're gonna see this set of code generated automatically. In this code, it includes this method right here called on state change. And you're going to see here there's state.setDefaults and state.configure. What so what are these states? Well, so when the there are certain th events that happen when you're using an indicator on your chart and those events will trigger the different states. And so every time you go between one of those states on state change is triggered is activated it, the, this method is called and then it will run through these if statements on when the state is being changed or what what the new state is so what we're going to we're going to run through each of the different states what they do and uh, how you can use them in NinjaTrader so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some more else if statements for the rest of the states um, in this uh, for the rest of the states that NinjaTrader has. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna delete all this stuff right here. Keep in mind, you should only do that specific to your indicators, don't just delete everything uh, that's generated from NinjaTrader, some of it is important. But just for viewing sake, I'm gonna, and just to make everything a little bit cleaner, I'm gonna get rid of all that stuff. So these are all the different states that uh, that can occur during the lifetime of an indicator from setting it up and uh, from setting it up onto your chart to removing it from your chart altogether. So the first state is going to be set defaults. This state is going to be where you set the values that pop up on any indicator when you're looking at its uh, user interface. So for example, we'll pull up ATR and you'll see the period here is set to 14. That is going to be set in set defaults. And we can confirm this by clicking on the ATR indicator. You can see on state change in set defaults in state uh, in state equals state dot set defaults, they set to the period to 14. And this is a property that they created down here. And now we went over what the uh, some of this in our last video, uh, going over how to build an indicator um, in NinjaTrader. Uh, but you can see here, so they have this public variable that's this uh, integer called period, and here they set it equal to fourteen. And because they set it in set state defaults, it'll appear here as soon as you click on the indicator. And so that's what you use set defaults for, essentially, is setting the, the values for your user interface in your indicator. Next is going to be state equals state.configure. The state equals state.config, so the configure state is gonna run as soon as you pr press okay or apply. It'll then run this configure state. Typically, you don't want to use this state for any complex calculations. You want to keep it relatively simple. Um, so you can uh, sometimes people use it to like set particular values, um, or you can uh, load in some indicators, stuff like that. But mo for the most part, you want to keep uh, state.configure relatively simple. It's just setting like some key values depending on what you need. So the active state is when uh, starts running when the configure state is done. There's not really too much else to it. It's a relatively simple state. I don't really use it in any of uh, my own personal scenarios. Um, but it's just when uh, when the indicator itself is configured and is now ready to start like receiving instructions. It's ready to start doing things um, is when it's in state.active. State.data loaded is gonna be when all of the series 
are is loaded in so this isn't going to include stuff like your chart data and if you have any indicators that you're bringing in it's going to include those as well data loaded is the state that gets triggered once all of those series are done being loaded in so the data is finished loading essentially the historical state is going to be triggered when the indicator starts processing historical data so what's historical data historical data is going to be everything that's already on the chart. So all of this that you see here is going to be historical data. It's all already happened. It's in the past. Now, right now, I am in um, playback. But if I were to go to real time, the real time data, like the as or the live trading data, anything that's already on the chart is considered historical data. So once the historical data starts, once it starts processing the historical data, it's going to run this state. So this can be useful if you're just looking to quickly add. So if, say, your indicator or whatever it is takes just a really long time to load per each bar, um, you can avoid having it process all of the historical data by just setting something in here to, like, process data equals false, right? So if I say on bar update, I'm only going to run this if through here, I'll create a private variable, it's going to be a Boolean, and we'll call it um, process uh, bar, right? Just something random, right? And we're going to set equal to uh, uh, false. So then what we can do is in historical, now let's say it's going to take like five minutes to run whatever indicator we're running per bar. And we're like, whoa, I don't want it to do that during the entire historical period because that would be uh, just an immense amount of time that isn't worth me taking. So what we can do is we can go in, when once historical is triggered, we can do um, process bar equal, we'll set equal to false right or you can set this equal to true and then in here we'll check if process bar equals true or you know what we'll do false then return so essentially what we're saying here is once historical data is started we we don't want to process that bar so if it's false, then we're just going to exit the method. And then if it's true, we'll do something, right? Something that just takes a lot of time. So transition, so now that historical is done, right? All the historical data is processed. Transition is going to be the period that occurs between historical and real time. So basically, historical data has finished processing. It's now going to trigger transition. And then it's going to immediately go into real time. So if you have nothing in here, nothing's going to happen, right? It's not going to, there's nothing special here. It's just saying this is just a break in between historical and real time data. And this is once real time data begins, it starts running real time. So here I can say process bar. Uh, we'll set it equal to true because now I want it to start. Oh my gosh, can't type because now I want it to start actually um, running the data that's going to take forever. For, for whatever reason, if your indicator is doing that, then that's uh, this is certainly a, a use case uh, for this method. You can also set it to where in historical data, if you don't want counting every tick, um, you can set it to you can quickly set it to like calculate on bar update just to make it a little faster. Um, and there's there's a bunch of other stuff you can do with that too. Um, and then finally, the last state is going to be terminated, uh, and this is just when you cancel or when you terminate the indicator. So if I were to add the ATR indicator, oh, so if I were to add. What do I have going on here? So if I were to add 
the ATR indicator, you can see it pops up right there. And I can just go indicators. And once you hit remove, it's now terminated and the terminated state is gonna run. So this is, this is like if you wanna like, if you have a bunch of data and you wanna send the data somewhere before you before the indicator is terminated, then you can do that in here. So you can, if you wanna like write all of the data to like a file or something like, like that, this is a great place to do it. So that's more or less all of the states. It's not too complicated. It's just an interesting way that they that NinjaTrader manages the life cycle of an indicator. And it makes it really easy to make sure your indicator is processing information the way that you want it to. And that's really, yeah, that's really what it is. It's, it's the life cycle of an indicator. Beginning of the indicator all the way to the end of the indicator. This is what's going on. Now there is another method that I want to talk quickly about, and that's going to be the set state method. So what you can do is if, um, if something happens, so say your indicator just completely, um, something goes completely wrong, something's null that's not supposed to be wrong, or maybe just a certain time is triggered, you can set uh, states. So you can go set state, and then you can set to like state dot, we'll just do state dot terminated. And it'll just terminate the indicator for you all together. And this, this is a great sort of like fail safe if something goes terribly wrong and you're just like, I need this indicator to shut down right now for whatever reason, then this is a great uh, method to use. There is um, a warning here though. You only want to be calling to use this method after um, state.data loaded. So it should only be utilized after any information starts being processed on the chart. Uh, otherwise you could run into some issues. NinjaTrader themselves have a bunch of documentation on uh, the on the states and the way you can use them, and I'm going to be linking to all of that uh, to all of their documentation in the description of this video, and I highly recommend taking a look at it. Um, if you have any questions about different ways you can utilize this, or uh, if something was a little unclear, or you would like further explanation feel free to leave a comment below or to send us an email at info at uh, I'll be more than happy to reach out to anybody and just uh, make sure that all of this stuff is well understood. It's uh, not relatively difficult to understand, but if you're new to coding or you're new to NinjaTrader, it can be kind of weird. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys may have. Uh, you're also more than welcome to send us an, in, an email at info at TaishTrading.io. I'll be leaving a bunch of helpful links in the description to NinjaTrader's own documentation on how to best utilize the different states and their methods. And thank you for joining us in this video on the life cycle of an indicator. And as always, good fortunes.